<laughs> but this is already improvised, so. Economists, not a group with a lot of Marys, Natashas, or Juanitas. And that's caused a lot of controversy. However, what's often overlooked are the actual female economists who are pushing economics forward by addressing real world issues. Welcome to Women in Economics. Norms about how you use social networks, right? That's you. Yeah. yeah. Let's try a little bit on that. Austin, take two marker. So when I talk about economics based on the cooperation of a local community, some people's minds might instantly jump to... But no, Eleanor Ostrom wasn't a socialist. Born in Los Angeles and a child of the Great Depression era, Ostrom's childhood was colored by digging a wartime Victory Vegetable Garden, knitting scarves for the troops and buying her clothes in a charity store. From an early age, the principles of cooperation and also resource conservation, they were ingrained deeply in her view of the world. I had to learn very early how to work hard and be independent. So it's no surprise that what's arguably her greatest accomplishments in economics, they have to do with disproving the consensus on what's been known as the tragedy of the commons. But hold on. What is the tragedy of the commons? Economists widely assumed that the common ownership of important resources would result in excessive exploitation. You know, people using a pasture or a lake or something, they're helplessly trapped into trying to get as much as they can for themselves. Imagine fishermen overfishing a common pond because each fisherman is afraid the others will pull out the fish first. So they all take out fish very rapidly, and next thing you know, there won't be any fish left in the pond. She didn't take that consensus as a given. <laughs> her history made her used to being a contrarian. Uh, so in the early years, I think being a woman was a big handicap. Getting into graduate school was a challenge. My mother wasn't even enthusiastic about my going to college. Where it was, you'll never be able to teach in a major university, you just can't get a job, da-da-da-da-da. In other words, she had to recognize repeatedly that what the establishment was saying wasn't always right. But I just got fascinated with what I was doing, and so being a stubborn son of a gun, I just kept going. So she approached the tragedy of the commons problem in a quite different way. Rather than just the typical theorizing found in economics texts at the time, she took a case study approach. She got out of the office and she talked to people on the ground. She traveled to investigate communal irrigation systems in Spain, forests in Nepal, and mountain villages in Japan. We found all sorts of patterns out there in the world. People self-organize common property institutions of a wide diversity of kind and sometimes solve problems very well. She inserted herself into communities and she collaborated with other disciplines, not just economics, but also uh, ecology, computer science, and psychology. All of that informed her research and her findings. Ostrom's key insight was to point out that very often, at least under the right circumstances, these tragedy of the commons problems can be solved, and especially they can be solved by small groups. And empirical work has shown people have found ways of agreeing on their own rules and extracting themselves from the problem. If you look at her total number of citations, how many times other researchers mentioned her work, she really was very close at the top. And in 2009, Lynn became the first woman to win the Nobel Prize in Economics. One way to solve problems is centralized government control or maybe turn resource management over to a big private company. But Eleanor Ostrom laid out how group norms applied at the local level really could help to solve a lot of environmental problems. That those small groups, they would develop rules telling hunters, how many deer can you shoot this season? How many fish can you pull out of the ground? How much water can you draw from the aquifer? And that communities working on that small local scale, using sanctions and rules and local governance, that they would be able to address a lot of environmental problems. And I think of Eleanor Ostrom as really one of the great environmental optimists of our time. We've been kind of taught that those rules are the rules. And what we know from the field is that uh, rules on paper and rules in form are different. Absolutely. Maybe to stop there. 
Want to better understand Ostrom and the tragedy of the commons? Click here for related materials and practice questions. Or check out other videos on how economists are tackling real-world problems such as poverty, education, and unemployment.